Okay, now we're in dangerous territory. <laughs> because we do not agree on we this. We do not agree, that's right. Uh, Ellen is a big believer in, in the pebble tray. In the pebble tray. Yes. I read a study that was done at a university extension service about, oh, 10 years ago that said that, that the uh, tray with the water in the bottom did very little to increase humidity around plants. So I gave up, and here's the reason that I gave up my trays. And then I'll pebbles. tell you why you should do it. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gave up my trays because the leaves fall down in there and oh. the dust from my house it's goes in so hard. there. That's, yeah, and that's pretty terrible. soon that's... there's this primordial uh, soup that's, that's true. Brewing. That part is true. Yeah. <laughs> right? It could get green and oozy. But and I'm... alternate life forms are growing in those trays, Ellen. I'm sorry. I take my pebbles out once a month and I bleach them. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> I love my house plants, and if you're not willing to sacrifice five minutes a month to clean your pebbles, you shouldn't be growing them in the first place. <laughs> I, or throw the pebbles out. I, I, I actually <laughs> um, heat with a wood stove in wintertime, so the air in our house is super, super dry. And so I've measured it with a humidistat. Um, and some people say, and it's also true, that if you group plants together, you're going to raise the humidity because yes. as they transpire and lose water through the leaves, that raises the ambient humidity. So I had a group of four or five plants growing together, and I measured the humidity at 17%. And that is really low for plants. And um, then I put them on a pebble tray, and it upped it to 35%. So I am convinced, and I do it, and I will continue to do it, that I love and respect CL, and I will never <laughs> ask her to use a pebble tray. But she can pry mine from my cold, dead hands. That's right. And, and from now on, when I speak about it, I'll say, but my friend <laughs> Ellen. <laughs> yeah. She said it does. Now, the, the, the study that I read, they said, of course, the thing that does increase humidity in a house is more plants. That's the route that I go. Yeah. More plants. Okay. <laughs> How do you do the bleach thing? Oh, uh, to clean the stones. It's true, as CL said, when organic matter falls into the water that's in the pebble tray, and by the way, if you do this, make sure that the water in the pebble tray comes just up to the bottom of the pot. You don't want it to come up over the bottom of the pot because then your roots are sitting in water. But as the water evaporates from around the pebbles, that's, that's when it raises the humidity. Um, and now, of course, I've forgotten your, oh yeah, the bleach. So organic matter falls into it and you may see algae or scum develop on the stones. I simply- Pond scum. T pond scum, yeah. <laughs> I take the stones out, I put them in a metal colander, I make a 10% bleach solution in a bucket, put the stones in the bucket, swish them around, let it sit there for a half an hour, pour them out and put it back in the pebble tray. You're All welcome. right. She's gonna do it. I know she <laughs> I think it probably wasn't getting constant watering. That would be my guess. Is that, you, you, does that does, ring true yeah. for you? Okay. Good call. I, yeah. I think not the constant level of moisture that peace lilies like. It probably went from dry to wet to dry to wet. And, and so the plant just didn't have enough. It was struggling. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So uh, who brought the zizi plant in? All right. And is this um, shell, is, this is under here to what? Okay. Ah, okay, all right, all good. Right. Well, we've got inside, we've got... Yeah. The, oh, 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 sure, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Thank you so much, Lily. Okay. <laughs> uh, I like ZZ plant. Uh, ZZ plant is, um, is a, a tough son of a you-know-what. Tough son of a house plant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. And it's also one of the best plants for low light. Low light. It does it, quite But it well. also grows well in high light. I mean, yes. this plant is so adaptable. It's kind of like the uh, Sansevieria yeah. that I've got over there in yeah. that you can have it in bright light, you can have it in the dark, and, yet, and, and it's hard to kill. And yet someone has tried very hard to kill this plant, <laughs> it seems to me. This was a bequeath from my daughter who moved from Boston to San okay. Francisco. Okay, okay. And she was, she was young and probably not paying that much attention to it. Okay, well, we know young people have other things on their mind. We'll cut her some slack. Yeah, we'll cut her a lot of slack. So that piece was a gone. Yeah, that piece had stems, no leaves. No okay. leaves means no photosynthesis. Right, no photosynthesis, no energy, no energy, no life. Now, these two stems are perfectly healthy. Yeah. I would say 
Would, would you agree this plant can be saved? I would say this plant can be saved. Yeah. That's right. I would also, however, cut off these two nody, big lumpy pieces. Well, they aren't that attractive, no. that's for sure. They are, however, nice and uh, alive, yellow, yep. and so they're not brown and rotting. That's see? good. You've got some nice yellow, firm tissue there. And you see these so roots? So that's a good sign. These roots are white and alive. Yeah. Some are dead, and we're peeling those off. And probably this plant right now, for the most part, is running on the energy stored in this corn. Yeah, or, it's know, very bowl. succulent, yeah. and that's going to hold. Yeah. And that's what makes and, it so drought tolerant. And that, and that really provides a lot of energy to a plant. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. Now, in terms of a pot, we have this one, we have this one, and we have the plastic one that it was growing in with mm. all the roots coming out the bottom. Yeah. What do you think it should go in? Well, I think the decision among these three is clear. It should be in this one. <laughs> um, it, first of all, and not just because it's so pretty. May I take the, um, sure. the tag off? But also because it is smaller. And look, there's not much root system on that. So you okay. want to put it in the smallest plant that you can. And um, it's also made of clay. So it's going to breathe a little bit better. And that's important for this plant. OK. Yeah. No, it's, it's clay. It's a it's really clay. nice pot. It is a nice pot. It's got an unusual shape to it, and it's got a... a and I wish you bought it here. <laughs> All right. Let's put that in there, and we don't want to... How's that? If I hold it right like so? Yeah, I could do that. Okay. Um, when you are transplanting a plant, um, do the soil little by little, and don't be afraid to poke your fingers down in there because you want the roots to make good contact with the potting mix. You don't want there to be big air pockets in there, yeah. um, so don't be afraid to really stick your fingers down yeah. in there. On the other hand, don't mash it so that you're mashing out all the air out of the potting mix either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's a, a question of firm, but not really, really hard. So um, commercial growers, when they're potting something up, they often do it very loosely and they let the water settle it down. But uh, it's probably more efficient labor wise. Faster. Yeah. yeah. It's faster. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Now look at how nice that looks. It doesn't already. look pathetic at all. Right? Doesn't that look good? Yeah. Okay. The, yeah. This sticking up? Well, I hesitate to cut this off. I would I would cut it off. You would cut yeah. this off? I would cut it off more. Because I can hold it. I think you could, because it's ugly. Well, it is ugly. Well, hmm? um, the way, the angle at which the stems are growing, I think would make it hard to bury it in the soil. But I think you can cut off a little bit more and that's going to look that? better. Yeah, I think that's better. Is that enough? I think that's enough. Yeah. Okay. The reason I was hesitating is that, again, a lot of energy stored in this, yeah. uh, this uh, stem. If it didn't have the, that big uh, it's got thing the one below, on the bottom. I would, I would right. agree with you. That's right. Now, when you take this home, again, thorough soaking when you water it. You know, be sure that the whole thing gets wet, let it drain, and then wait to water it again until it's uh, dry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you've got a really good shot with this plant. This plant's going to be fine. Pardon me? Just a minute. There's several people talking one, yeah. one at a time here. Go ahead. I said, isn't it going to hurt the plant that cut so much of the corn off? There's a lot left. The question was, is it going to hurt the plant to cut so much of that storage tissue off? And there is a lot left. There's a big chunk of it There's underneath a lot left. that. Now, had this been my plant, I probably would have lived with that corn for a while. But have. my friend Ellen said it was <laughs> ugly. <laughs> the other question was, um, what kind of light does the ZZ plant like? Um, and the ZZ plant, is, as I mentioned earlier, tolerates a wide range of lights. So it would be perfectly happy in this bright but not direct sun location. It tolerates some direct sun, and it's also a great low light plant, as CL mentioned. So if you, I mean, it's really adaptable. Who grows African violets? Everybody yeah. to grow African violets? Is this your plant? Yes. Okay. I'm, I love the fact that you brought this in because it's very typical of what African violets do in several ways, mm -hmm. okay? Um, number one, it's got some leaf damage on it, right? Yeah. And you can see the browning on some of the leaves, OK? So that's not that attractive, number one. Number two, when they do this, they're not going to be doing a job for this plant. Why would you think that this is happening? 
Well, my first guess would be cold water. Um, cold water on the leaves? Cold water on the leaves or cold water, being watered with cold water. Oh, interesting. The African okay. violet is in a family of plants called jesneriads. They often have fuzzy leaves, but not all of them do. And jesneriads, if, has anybody ever grown a streptocarpella? It's often sold as a, a flowering annual in the summer. Beautiful purpley blue flower, delicate. Yeah. And they always get these spots on their leaves. Right. And jesneriads are very um, susceptible to cold damage to the roots. So you always want to water them with room temperature water if you can. It's okay. just a little quirk. Okay. Yeah. Well, we, first of all, we're going to want to take those leaves off. Yes. Right? Because they, they don't look good, number one. They're not doing the job for the plant. So we'll put, take them off. But there are many leaves on this plant that are perfectly good looking. Mm -hmm. So taking some of those leaves off exposes another thing that African violets do. Yes. <laughs> Which is? This long stem with no leaves on it. Can you see that long stem that's starting to grow there? Um, African violets kind of grow up on the stem and pretty soon they're kind of tilting one way or the other. And there's a very easy fix for that. Okay. And what we're going to do is take off some of these and we're going to knock this. Have you had this plant long? I repotted it two years ago. Two years ago. Okay. It doesn't look root bound, you see? Not at all. So we could probably put it in the same pot. I think so. But I think, well, here, while you take this and talk about that, I'm just going to rinse this pot out. Yeah. And that was a good example on that pot. I did see some salt build up. From the salt, so yeah. So I don't know how often white. you're fertilizing. I have it on a tray of pebbles. Ah. <laughs> oh, well, then that, that's the problem. Oh, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. <laughs> okay. plastic trays and yeah. they actually have rocks. Okay. And I keep the water there because I was told to only do it in the bottom. Never well, a lot of people are told that with their African violets. And um, the reason for that is they can be damaged by water on the leaves, especially if it's in a sunny spot and those wa the water droplets act like a magnifying glass and that may damage the leaf tissue. But if you water carefully, if you water with a watering can that has a spout and you can direct the water directly to the soil and not splash on the leaves, you actually can water your African violet from the top. I but have big African violets. Yeah. I never water them from the bottom. I always stick the watering can right yeah. underneath the leaves. Me too. Saturate them well, let the water run out, wait for a few minutes, add a little more water, then empty the water out of the saucer. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 How often do they bloom? Once if you have a first bloom, when do you get another bloom? Well, I find mine bloom probably uh, for a total period of four to six months a year, but in one concentrated time. They don't put up some blossoms and then, you know, pause and, and then others. Uh, mine are different. Uh, okay. <laughs> I find that about the same amount of bloom time, but it'll go in spurts. Oh, okay. I'll have a nice cluster of flowers and then the plant will rest and then I'll be another, another cluster of flowers and the plant will rest. But it's not, you're, I don't think you're ever going to find any plant that's always in bloom. I can't right. think of anything that, that is always blooming trying to now. Yeah, I'm trying to now too, but we'll, we'll come up with that. Uh, in, in terms of a plant, um, sort of how plants grow, uh, most of them are triggered into flowering by certain conditions, you know, usually the conditions that they had in nature yeah. where they originated, number one. Number two, um, they're also blooming at times when they're going to be able to be pollinated because everything about a plant is about Leaves. Bo boss man has a question. And it's it's never stopped blooming. Anthurium. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anthuriums are are great plants. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so I have to get an anthurium and see if I can keep it into flower for at least a year. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. So um, you might have noticed. While CL was talking, I took some soil off the bottom of this root ball. And the reason I did that is because CL mentioned that there is something we do when the African violet develops a stem like that. And I'll let her describe it, but I'm preparing it for that. <laughs> well, what we do basically is bury that stem. Yeah. We just put it lower in the pot and put soil up over that stem. Um, I have even in the past, if I have a couple of those on an African violet, I will just cut it off 
and bury the stem mm -hmm. in new soil, keep it damp but not soaking, soaking for a little while, and it will reroot. And you can't do that with every plant. Yeah. Most plants, you need to maintain the original level of the crown. Right. But the African violet is one that you that actually you can bury. Can bury and it'll right. look a lot better. And it looks better and it and it gets new roots and it will respond. Did I give you so too much or is it? No, no, I think it's perfect. It's okay. Now we'll just put the soil around there and we can... I'm so glad we can be messy. <laughs> if you were doing this in your living room, it would not be so good. And after a little while, once this plant grows a little more, what I would probably do is to put it in the next size up pot and bury it a little more. Mm -hmm. Okay, bury that stem because there's still a little bit of stem coming. Should up we take here. it out and put it in more, or is it? So, it's, well, I it's think better. I think for now it is better. Yeah. And I think I would let it grow and recover this root system. And once you see it putting out new growth again, at that point, if you wanted, you could put it in the next larger size pot. Which and, would be a, a and, six inch, because this is in a four inch. Yeah, a uh, six inch pot and uh, it will get, you know, uh, uh, buried just even a little more. And when you get home, feel free to put this in your kitchen sink and spray off the dirt that's on the that leaves. Yeah. But just make sure that you um, test the temperature of the water on your arm first. And if it's comfortable and doesn't feel too cold or too hot, um, that's good. Okay. 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 And, and uh, I would probably do that earlier in the day, not right before you go to bed yep. as well. It's always better not to wet plants at night. Yeah. Yeah, in general, mm -hmm. in any plant, mm -hmm. so, yeah. If you're burying that stem, um, do you, I have this thing that I'm thinking the leaves should not be touching the soil because of the dampness or not? Well, the leaves actually are not touching the soil. Oh, all right. Now, what mm. is it? Uh, that is a good question. I, I don't know this plant. It looks l similar to a bromeliad uh, to me. I think it is a bromeliad. Okay. I think this is a bilbergia. Okay. And um, the reason that I think that is because of, um, look at these flowers. I've never actually grown a bilbergia, but I've always wanted to. Um, because the flowers are so beautiful. They, were they pink and purple? Who brought this in? Pink and purple and they look like tassels. Yeah, they hang down very graceful and yeah. they're pink and purple. Yeah. Um, so it is a bromeliad with a very, very graceful flowering habit. Okay, it is a little bit root bound. Just a little. <laughs> yeah. A little bit pot bound. How long yeah. have you had this plant? Twenty years. All so right. So this was a cutting. This was a cutting from another plant. A piece. Of a piece. Of one yeah. Right. It's right. grown a lot. A piece. It has grown. That's right. And and it looks like it's been in this pot for a while. So, yeah. So, let's see. And you've got pieces that are kind of hanging off mm -hmm. here that are just barely on. That are begging, begging yeah. to yeah. be transplanted. With a with a plant like this. I would not take it out and put it in a bigger pot. If this were my plant, Ellen, I would cut pieces off and put a piece in another pot. So you would, would leave? You, would you do that too? Or how would you treat this plant? If it were my plant, I would take it out of its pot mm -hmm. and I would probably take a pruning saw and cut the root ball in half mm -hmm. and try and make it into two smaller plants. And then I would take a piece of it and give it to the nice lady who said she always wanted to grow a bilbergia. <laughs> <laughs> Just for good plant karma, yeah. Well, and here's, here's the reason that I would do that if this, you know, to cut pieces off and to repot. And what I would do is probably cut the pieces off the outside of the plant mm -hmm. And I might even throw the centerpiece away. And the reason is bromeliad standardly bloom best from the newest growth. Mm -hmm. And when I'm looking at this right now, I've never grown this plant myself, but just looking at what it's doing now, I see a bloom spike on the outside plant here. I see a bloom spike on the outside plant here. I see a bloom spike on yeah. the There's outside a pattern there. plant <laughs> yeah. here. And that tells me that the blooms come from the new growth, all right? And my guess, if I had to guess, is that a few years ago, you had more flowers on this plant when it came into bloom. Am I right? 
and now fewer. And the reason that you have fewer is because it's blooming on the outside. There's only so much outside at this point because it's so bound. Yeah. And it's not producing flowers on the inside. That's typical bromeliad behavior, yeah. right? And, and like, I mean, if you grow uh, perennials in your garden, you may also notice that every once in a while, every three years, certain perennials need dividing because the center of the plant um, just doesn't produce the that's way it right. used to. That's so right, so the, new, the newest growth is the most floriferous. Yeah. That's, that's pretty typical. Mm -hmm. So shall we take this out? Do you want to? I don't know that you'll be able to. I think you need Oh, she has thrown down the gauntlet. <laughs> I am sure we can get this out. Turn it upside down, Ellen. Ugh. Maybe not. Here, you pull the pot and I'll hold the plant. <laughs> Be prepared to call 911 if she falls over. I'm, no, it's not going to come out. Yes, it is. It started to move already. It, it, Want a hammer? <laughs> we might need a hammer. Do you mind if we break the pot? <laughs> we'll give her a new one, <laughs> all right? Yeah. It may be. Do it again. Oh my goodness. <laughs> no. No, well, no, 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 a knife is not going to do no, it on this No, this plant. is, this is. We can see why it's not going to come out of here. A knife is not going to do it. In fact, uh, yeah, we this might is... even need a sledgehammer here. Jeez, And when wish. I show you, when we pick this up and show you. <laughs> I'm thrilled that you brought this in. I really am because... I mean, oh, this, well, boy, this is really, really root bound. All right. Ready? Look at this. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Look at how solid the roots are. And they are so solid that they've attached themselves to the clay pot. Yeah. I can't even pull it out like this. I can't pull it away. It's, it's going to have to be hammered out, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. This is the ideal this thing to do. This wasn't a sentimental pot for you. <laughs> this is the okay. ideal thing to do when you've had a difficult week. <laughs> Have you had a difficult week? Yeah. I've had a difficult week. <laughs> All right. We but go. you see, there is no pulling. There no pulling this out. No, you were right. You yeah, were right. it's it's completely, um, completely matted wow. here. Do you All have right. a pruning saw, like one of those folding pruning saws? I don't think we do. Uh, uh, really, a, a pruning saw? Can that, if the maybe the knife will do it. Let's let's try the serrated knife. Okay. And just see. See, I think this is going to work just fine. It's too bad we can't have a close up on this because most people would freak out at the thought of plunging a knife into the heart of their beloved bromeliad. But this is not hurting this plant. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But there was this, no around the edge this, on this, this one. Was, yeah. yeah. This one was, there's no around the edge. Yeah. So. Um, but this is not hurting the plant at all. Um, I mean, we could take this piece sure. here. Okay. Right? Yep. Okay. All right. So. Piece number one. There we have piece number one. Now you see, if this is put into uh, like this clay pot that's over there, right? The one on the ground. Yeah. Then you would put, and what I would probably do in addition to that is, is clip off some of these older leaves mm -hmm. that are spotted, right? Clean it up, do some grooming on the plant, and put this piece right in the center. And look, you see, there's, it's, it's even growing up yeah, above yeah, itself. Yeah, look at that. Right? Yes. It's even growing up above itself. And so we put it into the center so that then this plant can create all kinds of new growth out to both sides and it's going to get more growth which will result in more flowers. Mm -hmm. Why thank you. 
Thank you. I, I would be happy to have a little cutting to tuck in my suitcase. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we are going to take this and clean it up. Now then, what type of soil do we use for this plant? I can see that it's in regular potting soil mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Do we want to do that again? Um, yeah, it, this bromeliads generally are very drought tolerant, so I would probably use a lightweight mix. And I gotta How say, about a cacti mix? I would, that's exactly what I was gonna say. You could also put this in a cactus mix or an African violet mix. Um, and, and that's gonna be a, a fast draining potting soil. So it's not gonna stay too moist. And we just We've happen got to have some. Cactus mix. Excellent. Is that a cactus? Mix? No. But you can use cactus mix on lots of different plants if they are plants that don't want to be kept too wet. You Bas wouldn't you yeah. wouldn't use it on the peace lily. Basically a cactus mix is very similar to others. If you felt this, it's grittier. It's got some sand mm -hmm. in it, number one. That's one thing about it. Number two, it doesn't have a lot of bark pieces, whereas the regular potting mix has some pieces of bark in it. Well, you that the succulents Suc yes, succulents are great in mm -hmm. cactus mix, absolutely. And, yeah. So I'm going to put some of this cactus mix in here. We might actually end up with do you want me to cut off another piece to put in there with that, or? Well, what do you think? Would you like another piece, I or think, is this? I think it could use another piece in there, too, but. Okay. I like your theory of letting it grow out from all sides, so yeah. maybe we'll just keep it the way it is. Well, if, it, if we let it grow out from all sides mm. that way, then it's going to get new growth over the whole thing. Yeah. So, so what we're going to do is get this one potted up for you. We're going to send you home with the rest of it, and you at home can pot up the rest of it into several pots. After we okay. take a piece of it. A for after. <laughs> so. Pardon? How much? I would water it just like I water any other plant. Mm -hmm. I'd thoroughly saturate it when you water it, let it drain, yep. and then let it dry out. If you could feel this right now, it's quite moist at the center of the root ball. So, yeah, and once you have some loose, I mean, it's pretty hard to stick your finger down into this soil because it's, it's so full of roots. But now that CL is giving it all this nice, fresh, new soil, you'll be able to stick your finger down in there. And really, for 85 to 90% of the plants that you grow in your home, if it feels dry down to the first knuckle, it's time to water. If it feels moist, it's not time to water. That, now, that's my barometer. Now this is going to, because these are up above mm -hmm. the rest of the plant. It's going to be floppy. It's going to be floppy. And if this were my plant, what, well, you know what? I'm just going to stick this in. You yeah. Think, this will root right in yes, here, Yes, it right? will. Yeah. Okay. We're going to stick this in like this. I don't know if you can see, but this is what she's talking about. These little pups have yeah. grown out from individual these are, stems. These are pups. And these pups will grow on to, to flower once they've, they've rooted in here. But what I would do with this, if this were my plant, is to um, make a, a ring out of maybe a wire coat hanger oh. or, or use a ring that was on a hanging basket. You to know, keep it upright. To keep it upright while it gets rooted in there. When you, once you get it home, I would put some support in there. But this is, I mean, you can just take this home and drop this right into a... And drop it right into the center of a pot. Okay, the question was, should you slice into these matted roots? And that's something that, again, is conventional wisdom. And I, I don't know, I'll probably say, yes, you should. And then CA will be like, no, you shouldn't. But I would. I think it, in this case, it doesn't hurt. It, it's I'm just so, kind of scoring into yeah. them. It, it's on some plants, you don't want to, you really, you know, the problem with that wisdom is that people think they always have to do it, mm -hmm. and they don't, no. okay? And sometimes it's better not to damage the root system. But in something like this, this is so Considering what we've done to its root system already today, <laughs> a little scoring is nothing. <laughs> so so what, you know, what you're going to need to do when you get this home is just stake. What happened to our little tongue depressors? Oh, do you want them more? Yeah, give me one. That would be good because that will prop this center one up. I think. Okay. Let's see if we can do that. All right. So when you get this home, you're going to water it in well. All right. 
and uh, and you may need to prop these up for a while. They're staying pretty Shall I well. break you off a little piece? Do you want a piece? So, sure, a little one. Um, uh, yeah, no, just like a pup or something. Yeah, a yeah. pup is fine. Thank you. All right. 